Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. This is what we have in store for you for this March 18th, 2013 edition. Tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News, a run on Cyprus banks as the EU and European Central Bank loot people's accounts, shutting down the nation's banking system. Will Italy be next? Then, a TSA goon squad swarms Chicago's metro train, claiming a man's medical test was a nuclear threat. Plus, behind Al Gore's green lie, hard proof global warming forecasts costing everyone billions are and have always been wrong. All that and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. And welcome back. Top story headline. The rape of Cyprus by the European Union and the IMF. Now, just for a little background information on Cyprus, it's a little island that joined the Eurozone back in 2008, and the people there in Cyprus are having some difficulties by fraudulent taxes on their bank investments, where people are just being ripped off by the, uh, well, not even bank investments, just their bank accounts are being ripped off by the government there. And also they're experiencing a bank holiday, meaning that they cannot withdraw any of their funds. Let's take a look at the article. We'll, we'll just slide through a few points here. There was no tax on the bank accounts in Cyprus. That's one point. A bank account is not a bond or a stock or any sort of investment. A bank account is, a private, is the private property of a citizen or a corporation and does not belong to the government. There is, a, there is a deposit insurance in Europe. It guaranteed that the bank accounts of citizens would be insured up to 100,000 euros. And there are many other points, great points to point out. Matter of fact, in this article, I definitely encourage you to go ahead and read it for yourself. But it's a telling thing. You know, we've seen bank holidays and things such as that. People just having their money taken out of their bank accounts uh, with really no explanation. Just fraud is basically what the explanation is. And tying into that, we also have another article. The banking chief calls for a 15% looting of Italian savings. That's a great graphic right there. That's pretty much what it is. The news of the International Monetary Fund initially demanded to loot a shocking 40% of savings from the private bank accounts of Cyprus underscores the infamous IMF riot as the chief economist for the German Commerce Bank calls for Italians to be similarly plundered for 15% of their savings. George Kramer, chief economist for the German Commerce Bank, said a tax rate of 15 percent on the financial assets would probably be enough to push the Italian government debt below the critical level of 100 percent of gross domestic product. And for more on that, Gerald Salente was on the Alex Jones radio show, and he has some thoughts to share. Right, first, very important, the trend tracking tip. I write about it all the time. They always do it after the markets close after it's too late, whether it's a downgrade of a country's creditworthiness, releasing information about a big lie that they were covering up and are obligated to tell it about. It gives them time to rig it during the weekend so it doesn't go down as much as it should. Number two, what you said, the white shoe boy lingo. How about calling it a, uh, a tax on deposits? Isn't that a nice word? How about stealing your damn money? The other important point, we're only talking about a $10 billion bailout here. This isn't a big one. It shows you the fragility of the entire system. The next important point, you're hearing now from the American Banking Association from DC, don't worry about it, Americans. Your money's insured. Yeah, just like it's insured over there in Cyprus. As a member of the Eurozone, the money's supposed to be insured for 100,000 euros, about 125,000 But it's not insured from them stealing it. Exactly. But here's what I believe they're going to do. When the crisis starts spreading, what they're going to do, they're going to devalue the currencies. So they're going to say, yeah, yeah, don't worry, your money is insured. But guess what? It's only worth a fraction of what it is. And we're talking about what? About $600 trillion worth of rigging? And then you want to see a rig that's right in front of everybody's eyes? How about the bond market? You don't have to, you don't have to make it up. You see the money that they're dumping into the system every, uh, every month. $85 billion plus that we don't know about beyond the $85 billion that we know. So what I'm saying is 
for people to use their own common sense. Look what's going on. Do you think that Europeans right now aren't pulling their money out of their bank accounts? Don't you think that they're freaking out because they see what's going on? This deal, when, you, when I've been reading everything coming out on it, when the people from Cyprus, the president and the finance minister, went to Brussels, the deal was already done. The Germans told them what they were going to do. And they were going to take the money from the depositors. And where's the money going? The money is going. It's not, they talk about the, the, the banks in Cyprus. And they talk about the banks in Italy and in Spain. No, no. These are the big German banks, the Finnish banks, the Dutch banks, the Belgian banks that loaned all these banks in the smaller countries the money to loan out. They didn't get that money on their own. So what they're doing is they're really taking this money from the bottom so they could pay off the big guys at the top. So all I'm saying is if anybody thinks that they're not going to screw you, well, good for you. And great points as always from Gerald Salente. Next story, rabid organ transplant kills Maryland man. A man in Maryland has died of rabies, which he contracted from an infected kidney transplant. The Centers for Disease Control say the doctors did not suspect rabies as the cause of death in the donor and did not test for it. The donor died of raccoon rabies in Florida in 2011. I think it's also important to point out that the donor also donated to two other people who are being treated for rabies, but this particular died, uh, gentleman died from rabies. And I think it's a good practice to find out where these organs came from. They say that the doctors didn't know how the guy died, but you know, if you're putting something into somebody else's body, I mean, did the guy die in a, a motorcycle accident? Was he attacked by a shark? I mean, how did the guy die? And more for the medical malpractice, we have this article, uh, article by Mike Adams, and it points out the death of firearms versus doctors and or drugs. And we'll show you that here on the screen. And it just points out that how all the things in the uh, medical category, if you add up everything, the death by firearms, if you added up every single thing in that category, you can see on that graph right there, they would not even total one of the things in the medical category. So again, if you total tallied up everything in the death by firearms, they don't get close to touching anything on the death by the medical system. Not saying all doctors are bad, be sure to check in with your doctor regularly, but you know, things do happen and definitely be aware that it's not all foolproof. Next story. Feds form Metro train after detecting nuclear risk. Now there's a fatal flaw right in the headline itself, detecting nuclear risk. Let's find out if there was a risk at all. Sources say that the agents were members of the elite, the elite TSA Viper team on the 5.04 p.m. Union Pacific West Line. They were carrying handheld nuclear detection devices that picked up a reading. And what was the reading that they found? It was a gentleman who had recently come back from a uh, radiation treatment, something that most, if not all, hospitals in the United States provide. So if these Viper teams are gonna be on your trains and your buses and whatever else, I think it's gonna be a pretty regular thing that the uh, Viper team storm on, if we can put that graphic back up, and you can see the teams uh, coming through. Hey, whose bag is this? Whose coat is that? And you know, what's going on? And the guy says, hey man, I just, I just stopped by the doctor. And oh, okay, then you know, so they basically held the people hostage there for about 10, 15 minutes and then let them on their way. But the thing that surprised me was the gentleman himself, you know, the reporter asked him in that video, I encourage you to go watch it for yourself. The reporter says, sir, how do you feel knowing that they had stopped a whole train? knowing that uh, you just had some radio, uh, radioactive treatment. He said, oh, it made me feel safe that the TSA are here to uh, make me safe. That may be his particular view. I saw a agency holding a bunch of people hostage while they checked for somebody who just had something as simple as a medical procedure done. And in other news, InfoWars has been at the South by Southwest event. Uh, you know, when we're not out there protesting against not being able to hand out our magazines, we do things like bump into actors and activists such as Daniel Sanjata. And this is what he had to say about DHS arming to the teeth. 
We're asking people what they think about conspiracy theories and uh, why why they think the mainstream media attacks people who believe in so-called conspiracy theories. I hate the term conspiracy theories, although it's actually a, it's it's an accurate moniker because people do conspire in order to do various things. Some of them good, some of them bad. The two of them, you and I could conspire to feed a homeless person. Sometimes people conspire to pull off false flag terror events. I mean, you know, it goes both ways. Unfortunately. The term has been, you know, co-opted and turned into a, uh, I don't know, a, I don't know, a term of dismissal, a label that uh, that serves to dismiss what someone is saying without actually giving the facts that they may be presenting a fair chance. And I'm sorry, but I'm just tripping out over this drone flying around taking pictures of people. This is unbelievable. I'm sure you guys were already taking footage of this, That's but right. wow, man. And I'm sure that there's only non-lethal weaponry aboard. It's probably just, you know tasers and <laughs> yeah. well the FA FAA <laughs> just announced that by the year 2020 that they expect that there will be over 30,000 drones patrolling US uh, airways it's just, that's it's sad and unfortunate the Department of Homeland Security they just recently purchased two billion rounds of ammunition right about a, a lot of that's uh, hollow uh, point tips that sort of thing I mean, it tanks as well. It right? tanks as well. I mean, it's crazy. Do you think that they are preparing for like a red dawn type of situation, or could this be civil unrest, or even worse, you know, war with the American people? I don't know about just an, an all-out, you know, unprovoked strike against the American people. I think that might be a little bit extreme, but uh, clearly, people are starting to get upset about the moves that they see their government making, and they're probably preparing preemptively to you know they're probably preparing to to lock us down in case we were you know to do something that they didn't want us to do to rise up against them or, or what have you so uh, absolutely yeah. false flag terrorism what's the first thing that comes to mind when I say false flag terrorism obviously 9-11 um, but uh, you know it's something that governments have been doing you know in various countries for for a very long time in order to push forward agendas sometimes it's difficult to tell whether certain things actually just happen because of a confluence of circumstances and events uh, and then you know whether it's a, a shock doctrine-esque kind of approach they have an agenda something happens literally to randomly happen and then they use that they exploit that in order to push forward whatever that agenda may be or whether they sometimes orchestrate events in order to push forward agendas there's definitely a vast difference between the two but that's what I think about when I when I think about the term false flag all right, you're going to be in town for a couple of days. You should um, come be on the show, man. You know what? I, I I am going to be in town for a couple of days, but I'm here with the cast of a, of a, a television show that that I'm doing, and we actually a lot of our time is spoken for. So I don't know that I'll be able to come by the studio, but I do send my shout outs to Alex. Um, I remember fondly my my appearances on his show, and uh, keep fighting the info war. People need to be informed. Now, the Virginia government prosecutes homeowner with criminal charges for backyard chickens. Chickens. Now, I want to point out first and foremost, uh, according to the article, the lady is in an area where none of her friends and family surrounding the areas have not complained about her chickens. Nobody's complained, at least according to this article, and that gives us the headway to go in. Attorneys at the Rutherford Institute have filed a petition for appeal on behalf of a Virginia Beach resident, Tracy Ockroy, who faces criminal charges relating to zoning ordinances and violations for keeping chickens in her backyard. Moving on, in an October 2012 ruling, the court upheld the zoning board's decision, finding that Ockroy had, in fact, violated the zoning ordinance. Ockroy challenges the lower court's interpretation of the ordinance, arguing that the restrictions pertaining to keeping fowl or poultry within the city do not apply to animals raised as companions or pets. So you can decide for yourself if these are for uh, companionship or other things, but if the lady says they're her pets, then they're her pets. And if she wants to eat the eggs or sell the eggs or whatever else, that's secondary. But it reminds me of the chicken man story that happened in Georgia, I believe Darren McBreen covered that, and there you can see it right there, the mysterious death of Chicken Man, Darren McBreen on an Agenda 21 cover-up, basically a man who had been raising chickens at his home for, I believe, some time, uh, came in conflict with the, uh, the city council, and uh, he decided, hey, if I can't have my land and my chickens, nobody can, and he decided to burn the house down. I'm not, you know, advocating that, that type of uh, treatment 
or uh, that, that type of reaction. But, you know, I definitely hope nothing happens to this lady of that sort. Knock on wood. And we'll move on now to our last topic for the night, the Great Green Con. Now, if we take a look, we have a few graphs in this article that I like to point out to you. So we'll just take a look right here. And coming up, you'll see uh, this graph. It's titled, The Graph That Reveals How 95% Certain Estimates of the Earth Heating Up Were spectac a Spectacular uh, Miscalculation. Now, you can see the official black line right there. That is the official estimate numbers and also you see the other two colors which were uh, the predictions one that was supposed to be 95 percent certain and right there you can see in retrospect the actual numbers and then the predictions that are supposed to be a whopping uh, i mean some infernal sunspot <laughs> kind of deal and we'll move on to the quotes you just saw there on the screen and here's what the experts now say this from miss piers foster or po possibly mr piers foster global surface temperatures have not risen in 15 years they make the high estimates unlikely, and we'll move on now. This changes everything. Global warming should no longer be the main detriment of economic or energy policy. And from Ms. Uh, Judith Curry, Professor Judith Curry, climate models are running too hot. The current flat trend may continue for two more decades. So there you go, the many alarmists. And right after this break, we'll be back with Mr. Mark Moreno to talk more about this. But right now, before we go to our quote of the day, we do have a special report from Aaron Dykes talking about how your government and other officials are telling you you cannot film in public. Aaron Dykes here for Infowars.com. Now, it's all over the media how a Sky News reporter in China was detained by police because they were filming at the Tiananmen Square and they were talking about the 1989 Tiananmen Square protest. Not very well. We're currently being detained by Beijing police. That's when police approached them and put them on a bus. They've stopped us because of one word, I think it was. Uh, we were talking about the 1989 protest. They didn't like that. They've stopped us. And so now we're we're, um, we've been brought to the police station. And then later told them they weren't authorized to do their media work. By the media policies in China, and if you like to go on with your media work, you need to get the permissions. As an InfoWars reporter for more than seven years, I've been all over the country filming B-roll, filming protests, doing interviews for Alex, and I've encountered this over and over again, especially in cities like Washington, D.C., where we're told that you can't film in public even though there's a clear First Amendment. How you doing, guys? How you doing? Can I take a look at your film permit real quick? Sorry? Your film permit? Uh, yeah, it's called the First Amendment. Hey, how are you? Federal um, agent. Okay, is there a problem? Yes. Um, Thanks. Do you have your driver's license on? Well, sir, like I said... There's a sign right here that states, no electrical equipment, no video camera, no filming. Okay, they got three cop cars on us. But they're not They're, letting us leave. Yeah. We're taking some shots, man. Just getting a logo real quick. It'll be about 20 seconds as opposed to. Well, is there a law or? I mean. You can't, you can't feel in the building. You go through public affairs. No, I'm just getting some insurance shots. You no, know, you need to go through public affairs for you to videotape or take pictures. Of any federal building? Of any federal building. They won't tell me. They might be looking for me in Iraq, man. I killed one to one. I killed one to one. I killed this one. Do you folks have a, uh, a permit to, to film here? Uh, we do not have a permit. We don't, but we're just about done. We, we, okay. Okay. In Kansas City, we were approached by security guards who said they had been contacted by the Federal Reserve Bank, which was more than 200 yards across the street while we were filming from inside a World War I memorial, and they tried to force us to identify ourselves and then to leave under duress of being threatened with arrest. I'm sorry? We were just seeing who you were and what you were doing. Uh, what's your name? Uh, my name's Aaron. Okay. Hey, yeah, we're just, you you're fine. You're we're not just doing checking out this wrong. memorial. So. You're not doing anything wrong, okay? What's your last name, sir? Uh, I'm not going to give you my last name. Then you guys can see right now. Come on, guys. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, why, why do I have to leave? Because you're with him. I can Where's the property in? It's okay. old park. Well, if he gave his name, then he doesn't have to leave. He did give his name, but okay. it's kind of guilt by association. You guys need to go ahead and go. What is guilt by association? Sir, we're not going to answer any more questions. You can go to jail or you can leave. Are you a police officer, sir? We've we already... do have arrest powers. Do you want to go to jail? 
Am I under arrest? No, you're not under arrest. Not yet. You need to leave. You're encroaching on our First Amendment right. No, we are not. Why not? Who, this is public property. We have a right. Go ahead and go. Now. Then at the Texas Capitol, I was approached by an aggressive officer who didn't like the fact that I was filming and tried to force me to identify myself and detain me until he talked with his superiors. Who are you? Talk to me? Yeah. Who are you? Huh? Let me see your ID. You don't have an ID? Let me see your driver's license. Peace officer, sir. I'm a state police and put the camera some other direction. Don't touch my camera. ID, sir. Show me your ID, please. Why? Suspicious person. How's that? Let me see your ID, please, sir. It happens at airports, even though TSA's own policy admits that people have the right to film their encounters. We're told over and over again that we can't film TSA and that we don't have a right to report on what's happening inside airports in clear violation of the First Amendment and common law. I want to film this. Okay, you can't do that. Uh, it says so on your website we can. Your website says we can. Sir? Uh, sir, the First Amendment says we don't need permission. Yes, you do. It's the first, sir, do you write the Constitution? Alex Jones encountered this in 2004, as you've seen in his film, Martial Law, where thousands and thousands of protesters are arrested for no reason, and journalists are intimidated again and again by police and told they don't have permission to film on the city streets of New York. The police have been arresting reporters across the city, and a judge had ordered them to stop, but that just seemed to encourage them. Whoever gave those to you and get them revoked. I just ask you to do me a favor and not tape over here. It's my fault, sir. I'm his boss. I'm no, no, no. Listen. First of all, I'm talking. I don't need you to interrupt me while I'm talking. Yes, all right? Okay. And I just got finished telling him that I don't want him tape it over here. Meanwhile, trading videos created by Homeland Security and sent to law enforcement agencies throughout the nation advise officers to view photographers as potential terrorist threats and to run them through the terrorist screening database. See way down there? There's a woman taking photos of the dam. Someone called 911 and reported a suspicious person. As you guessed, she's going to be a Category 3 hit. And since it's very important that we don't let her know that we know, both the dispatcher and the officer need to make sure she doesn't hear the radio traffic. Stand by. If I could ask you to wait right here, please. Sure. All over the country, there have been cases of reporters being arrested for simply filming federal buildings or police officers. Police arrest folks all over the country for filming them in public, no matter how many times state and federal courts say it's constitutional. And federal buildings, they'll say, don't videotape, even if it's the middle of downtown Austin, like we're terrorists. Our own InfoWars magazine reporter was threatened with arrest for filming a judicial building in downtown Austin until Alex Jones protested the building and got them to admit that indeed the reporter had the right to take photographs of the building. But listen, all I'm saying is she... Okay, so it's not illegal for her as a journalist to take photos of this building across the Okay, 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 okay. Because, because I had to sit there and explain to her that she's not going to go to jail. In states like Illinois, they've abused wiretapping laws set up in the 70s meant to protect people from covert recordings and tried to apply them to out-in-the-open cameras and audio recorders trying to say that it's a crime. Authorities are being ordered to stop arresting and charging citizens who record audio of police in public. But the ruling is only a temporary order, which says the Illinois eavesdropping law likely violates the First Amendment. And they've even threatened people with life in prison for multiple counts of filming police. Allison had faced eavesdropping charges for recording audio of law enforcement in public. Crawford County State's attorney Tom Wiseman charged Allison with five felony counts. Each carries up to 15 years in prison. Do you really think he deserves prison time? It's not only outrageous, but it's a total chilling effect on free speech. Just last week during South by Southwest, our InfoWars street team was ticketed for trying to hand out free magazines. Again, a violation of the First Amendment. As InfoWars is handing out our monthly magazine for free, South by Southwest got some Austin police officers to issue warnings, then tickets when we wouldn't stop. 
But there is no ordinance against handing out free information on public streets. And it wasn't until Alex Jones went down there to protest that police backed off and many of them admitted they thought it was wrong. Did you hear that? Now I shot, I shot West people because they didn't get the cops to harass us because the cops are now behaving like they should under the Constitution. They're now having people come up and harass us saying you can't on city streets hand a magazine out because you're not shot by Southwest. So while we put the spotlight on the case of Mark Stone from Sky News and what happened to him in China and how they interfered with the media there, we should keep in mind that our own country is under attack and if we don't stand up for the First Amendment, we're going to lose it. In the name of terrorism, they've tried to chill speech and criminalize photographing public officials, police officers, and just public events in general. We can't let them do it. We have to stand up to it and say no and stand up for our right to film. Signing off for Infowars.com, I'm Aaron Dykes. I want to quickly remind you, you could sign up for our free newsletter at Infowars.com slash newsletter. And when you do it, you'll get a free e-version of our very popular Infowars magazine. And Aaron had a tough job getting all those times that we've all encountered the police or security or whoever. It, it never clicked in my mind how every single person on this crew has encountered the police in some form or another. It's just ridiculous. So we'll move now to our quote of the day. This from Fight Club, where the author of Fight Club, Our generation has had no great war, no great depression. Our war is spiritual. Our depression is in our lives. That's from Chuck Holinick. Now stay tuned. After this break, I'll be right back with Mr. Mark Moreno, where we talk about all things climate. So stay tuned. I'm Darren McBreen, and these are some of the new items that are available now at InfoWarsShop.com. Alert the public to Obama's blatant abuse of power with the new Obama t-shirt. Obama's joker face on the front and come and take it on the back. It's time to publicly call him out for what he is, a tyrant. Defend the Second Amendment with our top seller come and take it t-shirts. And look at that, women's cut tank tops and t-shirts now available. Nice hat. Plus, the Don't Tread on Me flag. And now you can become a micro distributor of the InfoWars magazine. Plus, get your own copy delivered right to your door each and every month. And if you're tired like I am of you and your family being exposed to polluted drinking water, get the Pro One High Performance Water Filter. It gets rid of all pathogenic bacteria, cysts, fluoride, heavy metals, and numerous other contaminants. So join the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. InfoWars Magazine is more than just our answer to the internet kill switch. We're also going back to the roots of this country. When our founders, for a decade before 1776, known as the pamphleteers, with hundreds of little printing presses in every colony, got out the real news, the real information, and countered the system. This is tailored, designed with the truth to wake up your friends and family. This is the 21st century version of the pamphleteers. So get them at InfoWarsShop.com or InfoWarsStore.com. Sign up and buy them in bulk. Sign up and be a micro distributor uh, for a full year to buy them in bulk and get one of the newsstands added, or sign up and get 12 issues delivered to your door or give a gift subscription. Whatever you do, be part of the fight. And I want to salute and thank all of you that are subscribers and are getting the magazine in bulk or who have ever come to InfoWarsStore.com and bought any of our products because we are supported by patriots and liberty lovers like you. We couldn't do it without you. And welcome back. Our guest tonight is Mark Moreno of ClimateDepot.com. He joins us to speak about all things climate. Thanks for joining us, Mark. Thank you very much. All right, now I want to start with this article we have right here. We cover this in our news portion. This is from the Mail Online headline, The Great Green Con, number one. And in this article, they have a graph that points out uh, the various global temperatures at various points. And there's a, uh, our viewers can see it on screen right there, there's a black line that shows the actual global temperatures as well as two different speculations. And then our viewers can see it right there. It goes on to a uh, horrendous 
almost hell on earth somewhat of a effect <laughs> yeah, it's these... like a dragon's breath of fire glowing and we're about to fall off the chart is what's happening and there's right. actually a contingent of scientists around the world led by the russian national academy of sciences and uk astrophysicists who are all predicting global cooling and, and the u.s geologist named don dr don easterbrook as well up to 100 years of cooling based on earth cycles natural cycles sun cycles so the first thing that's happening is they have egg all over their face. We were told by Al Gore, by the United Nations, by global warming activists, that we had runaway global warming. We were told the planet had a fever. And now we're going on 15, 16 years by every major global temperature database. And we're talking the land-based measurements, the satellite-based measurements. Um, this is an epic fail. The temperatures are flatlining. And, they, and I give the UK Daily Mail, you're not going to see an article like this in the LA Times or the New York Times or the Washington Post, but the UK and European papers are on to this. The German papers are on to what we're calling the green con now, the climate con. Mm -hmm. Der Spiegel in Germany is doing great journalism. What's wrong in America? Why can't we get the truth out in the mainstream media? It's not happening. Why can't we get the truth out? I don't think they want it out, Mark. But going back to this, to this article, um, we, we wouldn't have a job if the mainstream media were doing their job. Right? That's, that's exactly right. <laughs> now, going back to this article, I see they had something mentioned back in 1977. That was when people were told about the scourge of global cooling. So how do we go from 1977, we're all going to freeze to death, till 2013, now we're all going to burn to death? It's amazing. And they do it without any hint of satire. Uh, in the 1970s, we were literally told that it was man-made global cooling bringing on an ice age. It was our carbon base, our coal plants emitting sulfur dioxide, which was dimming the sunlight, which was causing global dimming, which was blocking the sun, which was causing the planet to cool. They actually said droughts, extreme storms, uh, and tornadoes, crop failure were all due to man-made global cooling. Fast forward 35 years, and they're blaming the exact same phenomena on man-made global warming. It is, it is unabashed. It is uh, absurd. And this is why we call it climate astrology. It's why we call it tabloid climatology. Whatever the cause of weather now, they're blaming it on us. And in the 70s, they did the exact same thing, except it was global cooling and a coming ice age then. And so what's happened is when you have 15, 16 years of no change in global temperatures, suddenly they don't talk about it. Now they say many bad things will happen. And guess what? Bad things happen all the time. So now they're, they're jumped to Australia if there's a heat wave. They jump to Africa if there's a drought. They mm -hmm. jump to Asia if there's a flood. Every day they can claim there's more proof of our theory. But there's always extreme weather. There's always something going on. And the idea that this is tied to, to global warming is absurd and actually contrary to all the latest peer-reviewed scientific studies that show there's that droughts are declining in the United States, droughts are showing no trend worldwide, floods are showing no trend up to 127 years, tornado, the big tornadoes are down dramatically since the 1950s. We're going through a hurricane dearth of seven or eight years without a big F3 or larger, I'm sorry, category three or larger hurricane making a landfall, the longest period uh, since, the, since 1900 in the U.S. So not only is extreme weather not getting worse, it's actually improved on almost every measure. But they could always say, well, we've had a worse drought in 2012 than we did the previous five years, and so it's getting worse. And if this keeps up and they project all this silliness in the future, it's not science anymore. We have NASA's lead global warming scientist in 2009 predicted that Obama would only have four years left to save the planet. This was heralded in the UK Guardian. Well, guess what? NASA's lead scientist now joins the Mayan calendar as having failed for a doomsday of Earth. Now that's a, that's a that's good point, not, Mark. Uh, I know I'm cutting you off here, but that, sure. the question in my mind is, how many people back in the day, you see back in the 1970s said, it's gonna be global cooling and now it's global warming and now it's whatever. How many people have, you know, rolled the train the whole way? They went from it was gonna be this to it's gonna be that. Do you know anybody in particular, any groups? Well, the, the, the name that would come up is Steven Schneider. Now Steven Schneider died about two years ago, but he was a big proponent. He was featured in Leonard Nimoy's The Coming Ice Age in the 1970s. Uh, he was a Stanford University scientist, uh, and Steven Schneider predicted that it was warning of the man-made man -made global cooling ice age, and he later became a global warming alarmist in the late 1980s. It took him quite less than a decade to shift gears fully. Hmm. Uh, and then NASA's J uh, James Hansen, a lot of his colleagues at NASA were involved in the original. I, I can't find a direct record of NASA's James Hansen, but some of his colleagues at NASA 
were directly involved in hyping the man-made global warming scare, as was our CIA, as was our National Academy of Science, um, as was the popular media, as was people like uh, uh, climatologist Reed Bryson. He's unique because Reed Bryson, he was from University of Wisconsin, he was a big man-made uh, ice age uh, alarmist. And then in the 1990s and, and in the 2000s, he became a global warming skeptic. So you have to respect him because he realized the error of the climatologist ways in the 1970s by jumping on the bandwagon. And he became one of the most rational global warming skeptics, you know, in the, in the, you know, from the decade until he died, I think in 2008, he died. Um, so there were many people that rode and are still riding this scare. And the, the main thing is whether you're talking about any environmental scare, whether you're talking about overpopulation, whether you're talking about the Amazon rainforest deforestation scare, whether you're talking about the global cooling scare, all of their solutions were the same. It was always more central planning, more international bodies, more government control, more changes in our lifestyle, more uh, you know intervention by government to take away our freedom, to take away our liberty, to take away our economic uh, choices. This is what the solution always is, because the intellectual left, if you can call them intellectual, or the activist left, uses the environmental movement to advance the cause of statism and uh, international uh, bureaucracy expanding. And that's what they've always done. And they're riding global warming all the way to the end. They've tried a little bit at the UN Earth Summit, which I attended uh, in last June uh, in, in Rio. De Janeiro, they tried to shift gears and make it about species extinction, uh, but they just couldn't get any traction. They had hardly any nations attending. It was a big bust. So now, with Obama's reelection, with Hurricane Sandy, they've reactivated global warming without the actual global warming because the temperatures sure. are rising into the extreme. It's called global weirding, in the words of the New York Times. That's what they oh. call it now. It's global weirding. The weather is so weird. Uh, and it's just an insult because A, the weather's not weird. B, the weather's always changing, and C, there's always extreme weather no matter where you go. But so, it, it'll all go away if you just start paying your carbon taxes, right? That's right, and that, oh, that is the most absurd. We have Barbara Boxer, the chair of the Senate Environment and Public Works Committee, actually making multiple claims that we needed to pass a carbon tax or cap and trade in order to improve our weather. We have U.S. Senator from Michigan, Debbie Stabenow, saying she feels global warming when she flies in the form of turbulence on the airplane because the <laughs> storms are worse. She senses more wor wor the storms are worse when she flies, and she's blaming it on global warming. We have President Obama, who's on record as saying, had we passed a climate bill in the U.S. Congress, we would have kept the Earth four or five degrees cooler for our children and grandchildren, let alone the fact his own EPA admitted the climate bill, not only would it not have impacted global temperatures, it wouldn't even have t impacted global CO2 levels. I so, think I think the temperature raise, according to Obama, is that he has all these drones dropping their hot ordinance everywhere. <laughs> but it, I just want to I want to point something out to you, Mark. I guess you're the man to talk to about this. We went out to South by Southwest. You may have saw we had a big protest out there because they wouldn't let us hand out our InfoWars magazine anyway. I was out there and some guy comes up to me when I'm with my camera and he says, hey man, I, I just came and I just saw Al Gore and it was great, it was powerful, it was this and it was that. And I asked the guy, and, I, and you know, I'm playing devil's advocate with him. So, so you think global warming is really? He's like, oh yeah, we've had Hurricane Sandy and we had the drought in Texas. And I say to him, I said, this is what I say, I say, sir, we've always had hurricanes and droughts and tornadoes. He's like, yeah, but then, then he switches his argument. You know, it's, it's this double thing. He's like, yeah, we have that, but we, then we have all this pollution and stuff. Like, things I do agree, we do have pollution, Mark. I'm not, I'm not right. debating that aspect, but yeah. you're telling me because somebody throws away a half-eaten hamburger in Kentucky that causes a drought in Texas, that makes no sense to me. And that's what they want you to believe. And you're right. When you start debating the science, and I went on with Bill Nye, the science guy. I went on with the Sierra Club president. It, on CNN's Piers Morgan, uh, and I actually cite all the peer-reviewed studies in the journal Nature and the hydrological journals. And it's like they don't have a case. When you hear the actual science, even the global warming activists who do this can't skew the studies, they still show no trend or declining trends. They have no rebuttal. And then they'll, they'll actually come down to, well, then they shift over and they say, well, the models show and predictions are when reality fails, they come up with a lot of scary predictions. And I credit Penn and Teller, the comedians, with this. They did an analysis in the, in the 1970s when you had people like Paul Ehrlich warning of doom just five, ten years into the future. They, the people, environmentalists learned from his mistakes. He predicted the absolute calamity by 1980. The problem is he was alive and well and had egg all over his face because all his predictions failed. So what the global warming activists have learned, they now make predictions 
so far into the future that they guarantee they'll be long dead before they have to be embarrassed the way Paul Ehrlich, who's in his 80s now, has been embarrassed. So when you hear these scary predictions of, you know, the new one out today, we're going to have a Katrina every other year, find out what year this calamity is alleged to be happening, and then find out the year of the, the person who's making the prediction, what year they were born. You do a little math, and invariably, they're long dead. And they don't have to be around, and they've learned that. So the environmental left has a learning curve because most of their predictions now are 2080, 2100, when all this calamity is going to be raining down upon us because you have people like James Hansen, again, egg on their face. The UN in 1989 said we had 10 years to act to, to stop global warming or it was too late. You know what? Let's take them up on it. That means it expired in 1999. Your tipping point, your Mayan calendar in the UN was 1999. The Mayan calendar by the NASA scientists was 2013. Let's accept it and call it what it is, and, and it's certainly not science. This is akin to the, to the interpretations of Nostradamus at this point. Exactly. And I remember growing up, it was always, you know, California is going to be underwater. California is going to break off and flow uh, into the sea. Bees from Africa are on their way up. And, you know, apparently there are some bigger bees, but they always had people terrified that we were going to be you know, dying a plague of bees from Africa. And there's always concerns about invasive species and stuff, but it's a fear it's alarm. It's irrational. It goes. It gets a kernel of truth in science, and it just hypes fear in a way that's designed to turn sovereignty, sovereignty and our freedoms over to international bodies and over to collectivist uh, governments. Exactly. Now, I don't want to let you go without getting into this. You have a new article at ClimateDepot.com. What is that? Yeah, this is breaking news. Breaking news. Uh, last week, the New York Times, Tom. Uh, I'm sorry, I think that's Tom Freeman, but Paul Krugman of the New York Times announced that those who deny global warming may be punished in the afterlife for doing so. He called climate denial, in quotes, an almost inconceivable sin. So this is where we are. The New York Times now on their website and in their newspapers is promoting the idea that skeptics of global warming are condemned to hell. Well, the L.A. Times didn't want to be left out of this circus. So today in the L.A. Times, Global warming activist and good friend of Al Gore, Bill McKibben, who's always a regular on Late Nights uh, with David Letterman, showed up and said that white America is the problem, that white America has fallen short by voting for, quote, climate deniers, unquote. And so now we've got it segregated, essentially. And so my website, Climate Depot, the message is simple. The global warming activist today on our Monday is white America is condemned to hell. That's the message. We're going to hell because we don't believe in global warming. It's an, it's, an, it's an inconceivable sin, according to Tom Krugman of the New York Times. And it's led by white Americans who are the real problem here. This is the state of the global warming debate. Yeah, I mean, it all always deteriorates down to just racial things. Like I believe it was L.A. Times last week said, if you're a white southern gun owner, especially if you have any type of religion, you're a terrorist. I mean, it's, all, it's always about race, and now they have these... Uh, white wristbands that, that white people are supposed to wear to remind them of their white privilege and whatever else, and they're supposed to just feel bad because of their skin tone. It makes no sense to me. Yeah, in fact, in 1990, I believe it was 1993, the Washington Post said at that time of the Christian Coalition, the Pat Robertson group, they were poor, uneducated, and easy to command. And then it turned out they were actually a lot of affluent, well-educated people that belonged. The Washington Post had issued retraction. What I find ironic in bringing up Pat Robertson, Pat Robertson was roundly ridiculed by the left for holding live prayer sessions on TV, I think it was 1987, to try to prevent a hurricane, to pray for a hurricane wouldn't hit the East Coast. Mm -hmm. He was mocked, ridiculed, and the same intellectual left, again, if you will, are now openly claiming that our SUVs caused Hurricane Sandy, that, that, that acts of Congress, the United Nations, can legislate bad weather. So the question is, what's wackier? Someone praying that a hurricane doesn't hit the East Coast or praying a hurricane goes out to sea? Or people who actually think that Congress can control floods, droughts, hurricanes, and tornadoes and make them less bad? People who think that we can vote our way to turbulence-free airline flights. That's where we are today. This is this it's 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 insanity. Exactly. Now we're about out of time. So closing comments, Mark. Well, right now, the the sad news is, uh, is that we defeated the carbon tax and the climate tax and the cap and trade in the U.S. Congress. We stopped the U.N. process. We stopped the U.S. from getting involved heavily in the in the climate treaty process. 
But President Obama is going to use a Nixon era law and start regulating global warming. He's going to use the EPA and other measures behind the scenes, unelected bureaucracy. Most Americans won't even know what's going on. And he's going to quietly start shutting down our industries behind the scenes. That's what he's poised to do. And the question is, can the Republicans threaten to defund these agencies? I doubt it. Can the Republicans make a coherent case of why he shouldn't do this? I doubt it. Can President Obama get away with this without the public largely being aware? I think he can. Mm -hmm. And so we're in a situation where we've won almost every single battle of this war uh, but the climate war, but we're about to uh, we're about to lose the entire war. We've won every battle, but we're about to lose the whole war if this goes forward. And it's a it's a very frustrating situation. Mark Moreno, ClimateDepot.com. Thank you for your time, sir. Thank you. Enjoyed it. Thank you. And there he goes. Now, if you want to support this broadcast, stop by PrisonPlanet.tv and get yourself a 15-day free trial. You can go there and you can see the Alex Jones radio show, the nightly news show, the rants, the special reports. It's all there there for you. Be sure to check that out, the 15-day free trial. And also, if you want to support us even more, you can stop by the InfoWars shop, pick up something on global warming or the climate change or whatever they're calling it this week. You can see it right there. Global warming, emerging science and understanding. That's for 1995 at the InfoWars shop. Well, that's it for the news. I'm Jakari Jackson, and we'll see you next time.